So, um, once everyone's settled in, um, please welcome uh, Carsten Noll and Starbuck for Deep Seal Kernel Analysis. Um, I guess we're starting quite punctu punctual today. Yeah, thanks. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for a little discussion on how to subvert hardware security best and how to do other fun stuff with hardware as well. Um, hardware defined as silicon chips, any microcontroller, microchip you can think of. Um, let me introduce Starbuck to you, notorious biometrics fingerprint hacker, as well as microchip hacker as of a few years. Um, I'm Carsten, doing microchip hacking as well with Starbuck, more on the cryptographic side though, which is where I'm coming from. Um, we're both at the CCC in Berlin at the moment and also interested in consulting if there's any um, industry need in, in secured analysis of these kind. Um, we'll be talking about how to reverse um, hardware. And let me start with an analogy, an analogy to software. So everybody here is probably aware of the process in which software is created, uh, where a designer starts by programming source code, and then that source code is being compiled into a binary that is composed of assembly instructions, which in turn are composed of bits. There is a reverse mapping from these bits and instructions back into a domain that we could understand that is um, a disassembly tool. Um, so this design process goes both ways, and everybody who's, in, in, uh, who's working in security is aware of the fact that um, especially the reverse way is very important to do security analyses on other people's designs where they don't openly share the source code. Um, so this the reverse way is crucial for security. In the hardware domain, however, um, this reverse way unfortunately doesn't exist yet. Um, there is a similar design process in which a designer creates some source code in different programming languages, but still pretty much just um, hacks a design into a computer and then compiles it with a place and route tool um, into an actual chip that is being built from, from logic gates which in turn are built from transistors. Now the re reverse mapping is what we want to provide and we'll be releasing bits and pieces of it today and hopefully enough for some of you to get involved uh, without deep hardware knowledge um, at reversing hardware. The process that we'll be explaining throughout the talk um, has the following steps. We start with um, a silicon chip, really any microcontroller um, or, or um, smart card chip, for instance, um, will take off micrometer by micrometer of this chip to take pictures then with a, an ordinary microscope. We'll stitch those pictures together to have basically a floor plan of the chip. That would be the equivalent of your, of your binary um, we'll use this, these chip images then to, to find instructions or what we call logic gates using pattern recognition and also the connections between these instructions, what in a software world would be the control flow. Um, finally, we'll try to interpret what these, what these logic gates mean and, and what algorithm is meant to be implemented using those circuits, right? And we do reach at... Um, and add enough of a description of an algorithm to, in our case, be able to break it, um, or to be able to do whatever you usually do as the last step of reverse engineering. Um, now, Starbuck is gonna go ahead now and talk about the, the, the first couple of steps. The, 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 um, this is here, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, the first, uh, b before you can um, start um, working on the chips, you have to get to the chips. So normally, these chips are in um, some kind of um, plastic card, as you can see on the on left side. There's an um, RFID chip with an antenna around here, and where the uh, ant antenna 
um, at the end of your antenna, there's a, there's a chip. So first of all, you had to um, extract the chip um, out of these plastic cards. So um, the, the uh, chip cards um, are made, at, um, made up of um, polycarbonate, so the best way is to use um, acetone. So the um, acetone will um, dissolve parts of the um, polycarbonate and you will get to the chip. Um, but most of the times um, the chip is not completely um, um, blank there, um, but it's still encapsulated in epoxy. So there um, have to be another um, step before you can get the, the bar chip. Um, and for this one you will need um, fuming, nit fuming nitric acid. It's a very um, yeah, um, bad acid, so you, normally you, you shouldn't do it um, at your kitchen. Um, but send it away to a chemical laboratory or something like that. Um, if you have, um, uh, sometimes the um, reseller, uh, the, the manufacturer sells also blank chips. So if you can get your hand on a blank chip, then you um, should buy this one. So to understand the, the next um, 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 steps on, this, on the next slides, first of all, um, how does a, um, such a chip look like? And we start on the, on the bottom, it's a um, bar silicon um, wafer, and on top um, it begins with a um, transistor layer, so there's a, a gate, um, source and drain over here, and those um, transistors um, are connected on higher level, on higher layers, calling the um, metal layers, um, with metal, um, yeah, metal wires. So, and, oops. Um, and um, as Carsten already mentioned, um, our work is to polish to each diff, um, individual layer, making, photo of, uh, making photos, and then try to find out the function of the um, implemented crypto algorithm, or something like that. Um, yeah, how to, how to polish to these layers? Um, we, we started with doing it manually, but um, on, if, if um, there's much better ways to do so with an um, automatic polishing machine, as you can see on the um, top right side. Um, so it's um, just a spinning table, and you put some um, polishing liquid um, on it, and it will polish um, the silicon chip at a, um, yeah, to the layer you want to have it. And there's generally a problem um, these chips have, um, on, on top of it, there are um, bonding pads. So if you put this upside down to polish it, it um, ha will, will have a, a tilt. So the solution for, for that problem is to take um, um, some um, plastic block which fits in the um, polishing machine holder and um, glue it with the, with the back side um, to this block. Because um, the black side is uh, the back side is very parallel to this active layers we want to polish in. Um, Let, let's point out though that that this polishing machine is absolutely not necessary. Nice to have, but um, we we have been doing fine with with the finest sandpaper and a vibrating surface at um, at my university. So this this is deluxe equipment. You can definitely do with with less fancy stuff. We started with um, polishing um, equipment from a fiber, optical fiber labo laboratory. Um, so everything below one micron and grain size of the polishing liquid or polishing paper um, should be fine. Um, there's another possibility um, to get to the single layers and it's called um, etching, wet etching with hydrofluoric acid. Um, but it's the, the hydrofluoric acid will go to the silicon dioxide, which is um, an isolator um, between each layer. But as you can see on this picture, there's a little problem um, to exactly get to, um, or to get to one exact um, layer. So normally you will dissolve um, some parts between layer one and two and between um, layer two and three. So you don't have a complete um, layer um, edged away. Um, so, um, um, hydrofolic acid.